Shifu taught you well. But he didn't teach you everything. Combat has been entirely reworked in Stellaris, and things have gotten quite a bit more complicated. Today I'm going to be going through destroyer designs, specifically for the mid to early late game, and I'm going to be showing off three main classes of ship that you'll might be using in a PvE, and probably more importantly, a PvP style situation. There are important nuances to each of these designs, and of course, if the enemy has a vastly higher number of ships than you, even if you have the better ship, you're probably still going to lose the combat. So all of this must be taken. So please remember, all of the testing I have done was done by throwing fleets against each other with an equal number of ships based on the cost. So equal economic cost. And I have looked at both who has been retreating as well as the casualties done to either side. But before we go any further, I'd like to talk about the sponsor of this video, Star Trek Timelines. Star Trek Timelines is a free-to-play strategy and role-playing mobile game, and downloading it is as simple as clicking on the link in the description below. Take on the role of a captain and command your first starship. Join up to embark on an adventure through space and time, save the galaxy from temporal anomalies, and enjoy action-packed 3D ship battles. You can also find all of your favorite Star Trek characters to collect and assemble the very best Starfleet crew. In Star Trek timelines, you will complete missions and ship battles in order to level up and collect captain rewards. Warp to new destinations, receive distress calls, and aim to bring some order to this galaxy of chaos. Use your assembled crew and take command of iconic ships like USS Enterprise and Voyager to then take part in PvE and PvP battles. You can invite your friends, create or join a fleet, and participate in daily and weekly events to share bonuses. Download Star Trek Timelines today. The first class we're going to take a look at here is a relative newcomer to the Stellaris ship design scene. Of course, as you probably already know, there was a massive rework with Stellaris 3.6 that has entirely reworked combat. For that reason, we have a whole bunch of changes and a whole bunch of new designs that we're going to go through. This first design is one we have not seen before, and it is the Missile Destroyer. We're going to go with a gunship bow and an interceptor ship stern. That's going to give us four small slots and a medium slot. Now these small slots will be filled with our missiles. Missiles are very, very good now as of Stellaris 3.6. In the M slot, we're going to put some swarmer missiles, which are the medium version of these missiles, fire faster, have, i.e. have a lower cooldown, and in general are harder to destroy via regular point defense. When it comes to combat computers, you're going to need to set your combat computer to artillery. Why are you going to do that? What is this going to do? Well, depending on the combat computer type you set up your ship with now, it will cause your ship to behave in different ways. An artillery combat computer will mean your ship will sit far back at the range of its furthest weapon and shoot with those weapons. This does mean that as enemy ships come closer to your ship, your ships will try to move further and further away from them. So as you can see, what is going to happen with this combat computer if we put our missiles on is that this missile boat will try to move backwards and stay out of range of the enemy weapons whilst firing missiles all the time. But what does that mean for you? Well, that means you're going to be focusing on the speed characteristic of your ships. Speed can be increased in a couple of ways. First off, you can increase the thrusters of your ship. Each level of additional thrusters will add 25% more ship speed, as well as some base chance to evade. And you can also add the afterburners components. Afterburners are much, much more important than they used to be. These afterburners will increase the sublight speed of your ships yet further. You can also use policies like rapid deployment and admirals with traits like scout to increase your sublight speed even more. And the reason you're going to want to do that is that this ship will rely on, first and foremost as one of its defenses, not being in range of the enemy. It will attempt to kite enemy ships as much as possible. So having a large speed advantage over any opponent ships you face will be critical to the survival of this missile destroyer. 
You might also notice I'm running five armor modules and only a single shield module. I will get back to the reason for that a little bit later, but just pay a little bit of attention to it. You might be asking, well, how can I defeat one of these missile destroyers? One solution is to go for a point defense missile destroyer. This will reduce the number of auxiliary slots you have, so this won't be quite as fast as a regular missile destroyer, but point defense now are much, much more effective than they used to be. In fact, a fleet of these point defense missile destroyers, if they were to come up against a fleet of the previous missile destroyers we just saw, will defeat the enemy dealing about 50% casualties on average and taking 1-2% to in return in a fair and balanced fight. But overall, I really would not recommend you actually build these ships because they are only going to be effective against those missile destroyer classes that we just looked at. Against other ship classes and against stations, they are going to fall off massively. Now let's look at the second of the three main classes I'd like to bring up today, and that is the Bypass Class Destroyer. We're going to be putting on disruptors to this ship. They have a small range and don't deal as much damage as other weapons, but they have 100% shield and armor penetration, meaning that in theory, they completely ignore armor and shields. And if you're enjoying this video, please penetrate that like button. They also have massively high accuracy and tracking, so when combined with even modest sensors, they will be able to completely negate the evasion bonus of corvettes, destroyers, and any other ship in the game. Couple that with the 100% accuracy, meaning you can't actually increase their accuracy any further, and that leaves us with only a few more choices to make. There is something of a hidden benefit to these disruptors as well, and that is the fact that because they deal damage directly to the hull points of an enemy ship, that reduces the combat effectiveness of that ship. The more damage a ship takes, the lower and lower its own damage output. Its damage output actually gets decreased as the hit points go closer and closer to zero. So not only will you be damaging the enemy ships, but you'll be limiting their combat potential with these weapons. Disruptors do suffer from a minor issue, and that is the fact that they cause large amounts of disengagement in enemy fleets. So whilst you will be winning the combat, you won't be dealing as many casualties to your opponent compared to if you are running a different design like the Missile Destroyer or the Laser Destroyer. Now, if you're coming up against Missile Destroyers, the previous design I showed off, you are going to want to have the fastest ships you possibly can in order to actually get in range of them before they run away. For that reason, if you cannot beat them in terms of having the right thrusters and including afterburners, these disruptor destroyers, these bypass destroyers are going to lose against missile destroyers. Even actually if you have the same speed as your enemy, you're not going to manage to win quite a lot of the time. You need to be going just a little bit faster at the bare minimum. You also want your disruptors to get in close and personal with the enemy. And for that reason, a picket combat computer is going to be the way forwards. Do make sure to fill up on as much armor as you possibly can because missiles completely bypass shields. So the only defense you'll have against them is armor and hull points. But that may leave you with the question, well, how do we defend against disruptors that are able to completely bypass shields and armor? The answer, ladies and gentlemen, is not crystal plating. It is instead armor hardening. Now, there are two types of hardening. There is armor hardening and shield hardening. Hardening basically means that any weapon that would bypass it instead deals that percentage of its damage to whatever defense you have. So in this case, we have 30% armor hardening from two reactive armors in our auxiliary slots, meaning that 30% of that bypass weapon damage will hit the armor instead of going through everything and going straight to our hull. Now, the reason reactive armor is going to be better than shield hardening is that we can stack quite a lot more in the way of armor hit points than shields. If I were to use up as much energy as I could on shields, that would only be three. Possibly I could fit a, a lower tier, a lower tech level shield slot for a fourth, but only around three or four shields on our defensive module slots here. 
Now with the 3.6 rework, shields also provide less hit points per module slot than armor. So if I were to focus on shield hardness to combat these disruptors, I would only have 500 points of shields available to soak up damage, which is quite a bit less than the amount of hull I've got. And as I increase my technology and have better and better shield hardening, I can actually get up to 50 with the right traits, 60, even higher, 70% on these destroyers. It will be more and more imperative to have more and more points to soak that bypass damage into. And for all of those reasons, when we put on five armor modules, because of course they don't take up any power unlike shields, so we can stack, we could actually go full armor, we can stack uh, ar uh, armor modules here until we get to a whopping 1100 points from armor. It also makes our destroyers here, these missile destroyers, as good as possible against coming up on other missiles. In fact, if you're building missile destroyers and you're coming up against disruptor destroyers, as long as you have armor hardening on and run a defensive arrangement something like this, it won't actually matter if you're slower than your enemy, you should still be able to defeat them because armor hardening will allow you to soak up lots more damage before you die. So how do we counter those missile destroyers? Well, there is a weapon we can use, ladies and gentlemen, and that is a laser destroyer. This is an LSS laser destroyer. We are going to struggle massively if we come up against a heavily shielded opponent. And for that reason, this is a design you probably only really want to use in a PvP situation or a situation where you have seen that the enemy have lots and lots of armor. Lasers are going to struggle against shields, but they'll do a, a massive plus 50% armor damage and plus 25% hull damage. You'll probably want to put on advanced afterburners in order to increase your speed as much as possible. You do need to get in range of the enemy ships in order to fire your lasers at them. So as usual, if you have much slower ships than the missile destroyers, you will struggle massively. But once you get into range, you are going to completely eviscerate any largely armored missile destroyers. If you're coming up against enemy disruptors, you'll probably want to switch it into armor hardening mode, but do be afraid. Disruptor destroyers are going to make short work of this ship design class because overall, disruptors are going to be slightly more effective weapons with dealing with this type of ship and this type of defense profile than our lasers. In summary, the missile destroyers will beat the bypass destroyers, assuming you have armor hardening. The bypass destroyers will beat the laser destroyers and it will definitely eviscerate them if they don't have any armor or shield hardening. And these laser destroyers will be able to take down missile destroyers, assuming they have the speed to get into range. There is, again, a lovely and massive rock, paper, scissors at play here. Overall, in a PvE environment, the missile destroyer is probably your best bet, as this is more of an all-rounder ship that will deal quite well with any slow enemy AI ships you might come up against. But in a PvP situation, do keep in mind the rock, paper, scissors of this whole scenario, and pay close attention using espionage to the speed of your enemy ships, as well as the weapons they are running and the defenses they have. In Intelligence gathering is now more important than ever before in Stellaris. The last thing I'm going to show off to help you with this summary is I'm going to quickly show you a summary of my results in destroyer versus destroyer testing. Now, what is important to note from this table is we have the ship class. I've also noted whether or not if it is a missile type ship, it is slower. If I have not written slower, that means that it is at equal speed or indeed the missile ship is slightly faster. AH stands for armor hardening, PD for point defense, and LSS and LM mean large, small, small, and large, medium. Otherwise, the only other thing to note is that the LM mix class is this destroyer you're seeing on your screen now, very reminiscent of an old ship design that you might have previously seen. Otherwise though, you probably should throw it out because today, whilst yes, it does fit in, it can destroy things as you'll note, it's not as good as a pure laser class most of the time. Another big thank you to Star Trek Timelines for sponsoring this video. Don't forget, you can take command of your very first starship by clicking the link down in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video on destroyer design and you'd like to know more about early corvette design and also what you can do with it in pre-contact warfare, 
click the video on screen now.